Hello again, Andrew Klein, video 8 in my compositing tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we're continuing uh, on our occlusion section of this tutorial. And what we need to do now is we need to really work and cut out the uh, alphas that we have here, cut out the transparency, and make sure that you know light isn't coming through and casting on these transparent objects. Uh, there's no really perfect way to do this, to be quite honest. Um, there's no way to get it to actually make occlusion based on the actual transparency map with the current Maya tools. And uh, the best we can do is kind of have it all there or have it not there. And sometimes I find it's more realistic just to have it not there than to have it there in the first place. So you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. But um, Again, note that this is going to be really hard to get perfectly whenever you're using transparency maps. So we just we have to kind of fight it the best we can. Uh, I also want to point out that I have a written version of a lot of this tutorial. Uh, this is on my teaching site, KleinMakeLearnGood.com. Uh, specifically, if I go back to my uh, teaching homepage, this is KleinMakeLearnGood.com. If you were to go to my Advanced Texturing and Lighting course, which is uh, MA3312, it's a course that I run at the Art Institute of California in San Francisco. Uh, if you go to this Advanced Texturing and Lighting page, I cover this material in week 10 of this course. Uh, so there's a section called Rendering Passes and Compositing. And I have a pretty lengthy written version of all of this, kind of talking about the ins and outs of you know, most of what we're going over here today. Well. If you scroll down, I do have a whole section here on uh, creating ambient occlusion passes. And the written information for what I'm about to cover, cutting out objects with alphas, is included here on this site. So uh, you'll be able to kind of reference this and see where we're going. I just want to point out, because I already have this rendered here, uh, you might experience, as we are in our renders back here, some shadow problems on anything that might need a transparent element. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut this out the problem that we're going to get, as I said, though, is we're going to get rid of all of our occlusion. It's either an all or nothing sort of thing. So we kind of have to work with it that way. But I'll show you how to cut this out. So uh, that's what we've got here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we have uh, in this uh, scene, these two objects are working correctly. My ground is working kind of correctly. Uh, my flag is working incorrectly. It's currently reading as all solid. Let's go ahead and make sure that this flag is cut out. So to do this, again, I'm going to make another new material. And uh, I'm going to make a new Lambert this time. Uh, so I make a new Lambert. This is called Lambert 3. Uh, I'm just going to rename this Flag Occlusion Material, or Flag Oc Mat is my sort of shorthand for this. Now I could use a surface shader, but I really like how the um, the Lambert allows me to kind of customize things a bit better. Uh, and to make my Lambert really kind of feel like a surface shader, a flat shaded thing, I'm going to turn the diffuse all the way up to 1. I'm going to make my color completely white. And I'm going to make my ambient color completely white. And my incandescence completely white. So essentially I've turned up all of these values the whole thing is now pretty much white here. Uh, actually, excuse me, I'm going to keep my incandescence as black. I realized turning my incandescence up is going to make my transparency glow. So uh, excuse me on that one. I'm just going to actually leave the incandescence as black. Just turn up the ambient color to white. Now I'm going to take this flag occlusion material and apply this right to the flag, which is going to give me what I need here that's now uh, all white. If I render this again, let's do uh, one more render. We'll see what this is doing. It's going to look better. There's going to be no occlusion. Uh, it's not going to be shaded on the uh, alpha part, but it is going to be all white there now, which is going to look also kind of weird. So you'll see what this is doing. It's now just an all white flag. So I'll save that down. And I can just scrub through and you can see kind of the beginning and kind of like how we've been updating this as we go. These are the updates that we have made. Let me go ahead and save this scene. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my original flag material. And uh, I would normally graph the network, but I'd lose all the nodes down here. So I'm just going to manually rebring down you know, all of the textures that I have connected to this. And we'll take a look at this um, network that I have here. 
it's kind of a complicated little network, so um, I do want to make sure that I can cover this. Uh, and one more, my shading group. Uh, this should be my Lambert 2 shading group. Okay, so perfect. So here was my original shading network for this flag in the master layer. Uh, this was my base material, and my color map here was applying to that uh, base material element. Uh, when rendered out, uh, you know, here's my color map. The color map had a transparency alpha that was embedded in Photoshop, an alpha channel embedded into the image, uh, and that was causing the flag to be cut out and uh, give it you know, this look, that's compressed, I guess, in this view, uh, view here, but uh, this look, you can see it's cut out right there. What I did, though, what I have to do with Mental Ray, and uh, this is a reminder, this is a whole other sort of uh, bit of information. I talked about this in a previous video using uh, shadow transparency shaders, but I had to take that same alpha transparency node, that same node, and I had to apply this transparency into my shadow shader. And the way this works is that in my default Lambert material, I click on the go to output connections, which takes me to my shading group node, which is right here. Now by default with mental ray, even if you have transparency, it's gonna render a shadow that matches your geometry. Essentially, my shadow on the ground would be a square shadow, even though I'm cutting out a sort of tattered flag shape with my shadow. To actually cut this out with Mental Ray, you need to create a shadow shader. And under Mental Ray, here's my shadow shader node. There was nothing in here previously. So I went and created a shadow shader, which under Mental Ray, shadow shaders is the MIB shadow transparency node. That's this node that I had here that I had created. I simply take my shadow or my transparency map and apply it into the transparency of my shadow shader. And that's going to cut out my shadow based on the transparency map that I'm using here to make sure that my shadow has a little raggedy edge. And again, that's what we're seeing here inside of my render, getting that ragged cutout. Well, one more problem with this, and the reason why you see a reverse node here is that Mental Ray is a little weird and peculiar when it comes to Maya. My transparency map uh, in Maya, as far as what Maya is reading, white means solid and black means transparent. For any Mental Ray node you use, however, and I know this is kind of cryptic, but any Mental Ray node you use, white means transparent and black means solid. So that's a little weird. Um, but uh, what I had done is I had taken this node and I had applied it through reverse on its way to the transparency. So essentially the reverse turns the white into black and the black into white, and that way it cuts out the transparency properly. And you know that whole thing, that was the node network that I had created here to make this original flag. Now the reason why that's important is because this transparency map right here, I'm going to use to cut out the transparency of my new flag occlusion material. I'll just reuse this texture by middle mouse dragging it right onto the transparency of this material. All right, let's see what this does when I render this out now. I'll just save my scene, bring back my render, which keeps popping up whenever I do anything, and uh, let's hit render again. So what we should now see is that at least the tattered edge should be cut out from this. And there we go. We see that tattered edge being cut out. All right, so we've made some improvements. Again, we go back from the beginning. You can see my original occlusion pass simulating these as if they were all solid objects. I update this to affect the transparency of the first one. I update this now to affect the transparency of the second one. The remaining problem here, though, is that my objects are casting these shadows onto the backdrop. And this is what gets a little weird. This is some really technical mental ray stuff, and I want to make sure that you guys can see this. I'm just going to make sure I have my windows optimized here so I can get through this next part. Now, on my geometry, on my two objects that I don't want to cast shadows here inside of um, 
my occlusion render. I have to do, again, some really, really weird stuff. Let's start off with my torus. I'm going to have to do the same thing with the torus and the plane. I'm just going to have to do this twice, so you'll see me repeat myself. Uh, I'm first off going to have to add a special attribute to my object. So I select my torus. I'm going to go to modify and choose add attribute. That's going to pop up this window. You must spell everything exactly correct here for this to work. It has to be exactly capitalized and spelled in the perfectly correct way. I'm going to add an attribute to this torus called mi label. The M and the I are lowercase, the first L is capitalized, and then the A, B, E, L are all lowercase. So that is MI label, mental images label. I'm also going to type or click the checkbox for override nice name. And I have to make sure that this area is spelled correctly as well. I need MI label. There's a space now between the MI and the label. The I in this nice name needs to be capitalized as well. So now this nice name is capital M, capital I, space, capital L, lowercase a, b, e, l. Weird, right? I'm sorry, I didn't make this. It's kind of a crazy piece of software. You just kind of have to play by its rules. Then down here in numeric attribute properties, we have to enter a default number. You can type any number that you want. Uh, my favorite number is number 22, so I'm going to type number 22. I'll hit enter, and now I'm going to have a default property. I am going to add this attribute to my torus, and I'm going to repeat the exact same stuff with my plane. My long name, MI label, I'm making sure to spell everything correctly. Uh, again, got to capitalize that I and the nice name give a default value of the same 22 here and say add to that. And I can close this add attribute. You'll notice now in both of my objects in their shape node, or my bad, sorry, in the translate node, not the shape node. So in ptorus1, not ptorus shape1, uh, I have a new attribute called extra attributes mi label with a value of 22. I have the same thing here for my polygon plane, which is my little flag. They both have a number of 22. Just keep a consistent number because you're going to only want to use this number once. So we have to add this attribute first. It's essentially a render flag saying that anything with this number is not going to get occlusion. Well, then I have to go back into my hypershade, which is going to take a second to open up. And uh, I'm going to take a look at my occlusion material network. Here's my MIB occlusion node. This was the uh, occlusion node that's being applied to all of my solid geometry in the scene. To make sure that anything that has a number 22 applied to it, doesn't get or doesn't cast occlusion, what I'm going to do is in the ID in excluc value, that's this value here, it's ID INCLEXCL, I don't know how you pronounce that, ID in excluc. Um, in this value, I'm going to type a negative version of this number. So I type negative, or so I, I type 22 in the previous value, I'm going to type a negative 22 here and hit enter. Again, I'm sorry, I didn't make this stupid software. This is just what you have to do to make this work. So I type a negative 22 here, and uh, I'm going to uh, save my scene. I don't know why I'm apologizing for Maya so much, but this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen Maya have to do. So I just wish there was an easier way for me to show this to you. Uh, this is just the way that I've always done it. Uh, back in my render view, over here, Let's save down what I had previously, and let's click out one more render. And what we should see now is that my objects are going to render. I'll have occlusion, but those objects that have a 22 applied to them are not going to be casting occlusion. So if you have transparent objects, this is the best workaround I can give you. You can see now that my torus and my flag are now cut out completely. So, 
I'll save this image. I'm just going to uh, override that occlusion image. Actually, I'll save a new image, occlusion 2 in this case, as a TIFF. I'll save that out. And then let's load that new occlusion image here into Photoshop, where I'll copy it and paste it on top. And I will set it to multiply. Now when it multiplies on, I'm only getting my deep shadows for my truly solid objects as opposed to before when I multiplied this where it was darkening up things that just didn't look quite right. So to really get that very specific occlusion pass, this is what you have to do. Uh, this has been video 8 on occlusion and that's the final part of my occlusion videos. Uh, next video, video 9, we're going to talk more about breaking out characters for foregrounds. We're going to look at how to separate out all of those character elements and make sure they're working appropriately. Um, so stay tuned for video 9 in this series.